episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Brody. I'm joined alongside my co-host, a good friend, London Beth, and happy Victory Monday. The Chicago Bears defeated the Miami Dolphins 20-13 to this past Saturday at Soldier Field. The defense looked good. The offensive line actually looked like it held their own, and Justin Fields, wow. He is everything in a bag of chips in regards to the expectations that the Chicago Bears were looking for. Fans are happy. Bears Twitter is going crazy. Coaches are very excited. It was a beautiful day for football and an even beautiful future for the Chicago Bears. But before we begin, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Stupid Car Tray. Tired of your pizza topping sliding, office coffee distracting you while driving, grease and other stains getting on your seat, or you're just enjoying a game on the couch and don't want to lean over, look no further than the Stupid Car Tray. Proudly USA made, Stupid Car Tray makes your passenger seat or couch a level surface for all transportation and couch potato needs. With accessories like the Stupid Seat Anchor, hand sanitizer bottle, or 100% silicone grip mat, your tray is the ultimate car organizer. With over 20 different color combinations, there's a Stupid Car Tray for everyone. Visit www.stupidcartray.com and use discount code J16 to get 16% off your entire order. Link in the description. Less stress, less stressful driving experience. Listen, Nick, nothing relieved my stress more on Saturday than watching that absolutely great performance by Justin Fields. So let's get into it and talk to uh, talk about it. Yeah, so let's do a quick overview of the game from this past Saturday. The Bears, again, defeated the Miami Dolphins 20-13 to at Soldier Field after an awesome effort by all those involved. And obviously, there's no I in team. This was an absolute team effort, and it was the most packed preseason game ever in Chicago Bears history. There was a lot of hype around this game, especially around a guy named Justin Fields, who played fantastic. Uh, we're going to get into his stats in a little bit, but he... Really did a great job. He was out there for a lot of the game. Uh, the, the, Matt Nagy stuck to his guns and said, this guy is going to get by far the most playing time for quarterback. And he took complete advantage of it. As London always says, go out and get it, young man. You're a rookie. This is your shot. And he definitely took advantage of it. And he won over probably every single person in Chicago, even people who don't know who Justin Fields is. So nearly 60,000 fans at Soldier Field for a preseason game. Again, Soldier Field only holds about 68,000 fans without standing room and without box seats. Very impressive. It was great to see. You could feel it felt like an actual NFL game. And the teams were playing that way. There was a lot of energy at Soldier Field. And Justin Fields performed very well, especially and thanks to the offensive line, who did not allow one sack all day. Not one. There was quarterback pressure. There's no doubt about that. But Andy Dalton didn't get sacked on the two series that he was in. Nick Foles didn't get sacked, who we know can't move around very well. And Justin Fields definitely took his feet to the advantage. And sure, he spun out of a few things for the offensive line, but no sacks is no sacks on the stat sheet. And that's a great thing to see. The defense looked very improved under defensive coordinator Sean Desai. Having a takeaway, having a couple sacks, a lot of guys coming out and balling out, especially the second string guys, seeing depth. Um, you know, they, they only gave up one touchdown and two field goals in the game. So that's something very exciting for Chicago Bears fans, especially against an improving Miami defense. So London, before we take a deeper, deeper dive into these, what did you see while watching the game and what really caught your attention from a high level view? Yeah, I'm going to start off with the possibly less exciting news, but something that a lot of Bears fans should be really excited about. And that's Coach Desai. I mean, we came out and the Miami Dolphins punched us in the mouth. I mean, yes. we were down early. It just kind of looked like we were a little dysfunctional and all that kind of stuff. And then throughout the game, I mean, we held them to zero points in the second half. We made that huge run once Justin Fields came into the game. And it was just absolutely fantastic to see guys. I know we're going to talk about like Alec Ogletree. I know we're going to talk about, you know, Blau Nichols and even like Cleo Mack's little brother had some really, really, really phenomenal plays. And our secondary looked awesome also. Um, especially the younger and the second and third string guys. So that first and foremost, you know, the Chicago Bears were the monsters of the midway. We're known for our defense. And it was really, really great to see our defense continue to do what we do. We hold teams to under 21 points. And now that with our offense now, gives us opportunities to win games because we're holding teams to such few points. It's what we, we've always been known for. The problem is the offense hasn't been there. Nick, flipping to the offensive side, listen, I've been nervous. I know you've been nervous. We've both been nervous about this offensive line. The one thing I'm going to say to all Chicago Bears fans, yes, 
we should still be nervous. Yes, the Miami Dolphins do not have a good pass rush and defensive line. Overall, we still did really well and were, I think, yeah, it was us and then Zach Wilson was uh, for the New York Jets were the only rookie quarterbacks that were not sacked. But Justin Fields had 3.8 seconds average a snap to throw the ball. That is phenomenal. Now, granted, I'll put a little bit on the Miami Dolphins, but listen, if this offensive line gets healthy before week one, we should expect actual big things. Like I know you and I have been preaching about constantly that we have a good, strong offensive line. I still am a little nervous if we're going in with this group, but listen, Justin Fields balled out. The offensive line balled out. I was so excited. Football's back. 60,000 fans. How could you not be excited? How could you not? And it's Soldier Field. It was a beautiful summer day in Chicago. I really like that the Bears also played in the middle of the day this time. I think that was something that they switched up. Uh, usually it is at nighttime that preseason games are played in Chicago. So that was something. And I totally agree in regards to the offensive line. Uh, the Bears did make a move in signing Jason Peters. We'll get into that in a little bit uh, to bring in offensive line help. But the offensive line did its job. And that's all that matters. Justin Fields had time. Andy Dalton had time. And Nick Foles had time. So you know, it, that's a great thing to see, and we're very excited about that. But let's jump into Justin Fields' number one topic of the day, obviously. Justin Fields played absolutely fantastic for a rookie quarterback with a banged-up offensive line and playing with the second-string wide receivers. Justin Fields went 14 for 20 passing with 142 passing yards and one passing touchdown. Then he used his feet on five rushing attempts for 33 yards, so six yards a gain, not too bad, including a rushing touchdown. Uh, he did have a fumble. He did start off a little rough at first. There's no doubt about that. He had the jitters of a rookie quarterback. Uh, he had a fumble that he did end up recovering, which is really great to see. But he bounced back very well. He didn't let that mentality of, oh, my gosh, I messed up take over. He bounced back immediately. And that's something that a lot of pros, veterans, still can't even do. And Justin Fields did that right out of the great game. Great take, so, Nick. Great yeah, take right there. Abs yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, it's just crazy to see how mature this guy is being a rookie in the locker room. He's not very, you know, loud. He's not very crazy. He actually said after the game, the game, the NFL game was slower than he expected. And that's him saying, I want to be on the first teams. I want to play against the Miami number one defense. I want to play against the LA Rams number one defense week one in LA. It's speaking volumes for this guy to want to take that next step. And he's not just saying it because he has to say it to look good. He actually genuinely means it. He was in, interacting with fans. He was so pumped up. You see the video of him leaving the stadium. It's a picture of him just absolutely hands in the air, biggest smile, five mile smile. Very excited to see. So he's adjusting well, going back to, you know, the whole, he had the jitters at first, but he adjusted very well to the Matt Nagy and Bill Lazor offensive scheme. That's something that's really good to see that the coach Nagy and Lazor, obviously last year had a lot of issues in regards to who had power at the offensive coordinator side of the ball. They are both calling the plays. That's something that, you know, a lot of Bear fans need to realize. And Justin Fields is a guy that works very well in their offense. He's learning their offense very well. Not saying Andy Dalton hasn't, but Justin Fields being a rookie quarterback, that's very that's something very good to see. He threaded the needle on a lot of passes, whether that have been on the move or having time in the pocket that the offensive line provided for him. So he's not just performing in practice, folks. He's also performing on the field against different teams. And yes, he had the opportunity to play against Miami in joint practices the week during the week of the game. But that doesn't speak that speaks more volumes when you do it in the middle of a game, when you have 60,000 people cheering you on. The fans do have an impact on the game. There's no doubt about it. And what I think is really cool about this entire situation is that Matt Nagy had Andy Dalton go up to Justin Fields, hug him with a big smile and say, it's your time to shine, kid. I, I think that was probably the coolest moment. A guy that comes into Chicago that is knows that he is not the answer, knows Justin Fields is is the future. Andy Dalton could be the answer right now. I know a lot of people are saying that field should start. Let's pump the brakes a little bit. You know, he still has some things he has to work on, but what a cool moment for Andy Dalton, the mature move, the leadership move, the mentorship move. That is something that the bears have been missing for a very long time at the quarterback position. You know, Mike Glennon definitely would not have done that for Trubisky. Mike Glennon turned the other way with his super long neck, but overall, I mean, Andy Dalton, what a class move. You cannot deny that this guy is a class act and represents the Bears uh, organization with nothing but pride and success. London, what is your reaction to Fields play? He looked fantastic with his feet, fantastic throwing, and was able to, get, again, get that mental you know, game back on. 
What is your just reaction? I know Bears fans are ecstatic, but coming from a guy that played a lot of football in his life, how do you feel? How do you feel as a Bears fan? How do you feel as a player? How do you feel? Excited. Uh, excited is the best word to go with it, Nick. Uh, Justin Fields, and actually this is one thing that a lot of Bears fans haven't been talking about uh, because they've been kind of so lost in the in the Twitter excitement of everything, you know, calling out Justin Fields to start week one and all that kind of different stuff that I'm seeing all over the place. Um, the one thing, the excitement comes from that he struggled early, okay? He is a young guy, okay? He is a rookie quarterback in He's the NFL. <laughs> he is a rookie quarterback in the NFL. He, granted, was probably one of the most athletic players on Ohio State and on that field when he was in college. Now he is not, okay? And I think that that reality kind of moment when – you know, he tried to scramble. He didn't go down fast enough. He fumbled the ball. He grabbed it. I think that was the moment where he just went, aha, okay. I understand what I need to do. Yes. I understand how I need to play. And I understand how to be successful in this NFL. And I'll give a uh, huge kudos to our defense for just beating the crap out of him during practice and training camp. I think that's helped him a lot. A lot. But listen, I loved that he had adversity at first. He had a lot of weight on his shoulders. He had 60,000 fans screaming and giving him literally a standing ovation when he touched the field. That's a ton of pressure. And his, the city is at his grips right now. He went out there. He struggled a little bit. But listen, when he went back out there in the second half, he calmly and just you know, didn't let anything shake him and he absolutely dominated the rest of the game. And, and that was really exciting to see. Cause that's something that I, I know we're going to talk about Trubisky here real quick and do a shot at him, but that's something that Trubisky just did not have the moment no. he started, like had a bad play. The moment he kind of like threw an interception or fumbled the ball, he would just crumble. And he honestly, it was kind of over. And seeing that maturity out of Justin Fields is exactly what I've constantly heard from so many reporters and so many coaches around him is that, listen, he'll make mistakes because he is a rookie, but he'll get out there and he'll give it 100% the next play. And he has a very, very quick short-term memory. I absolutely love that as a quarterback. And that is something that, again, not a lot of Twitter is talking about, but something that Chicago Bears fans should be extremely excited about. Overall, Nick, Super excited about it. I, I loved his ability to run. I loved his ability to pass. I loved his decision-making. I love that when Jesse James was wide open on that play because he read the defense properly and knew he was going to be wide open, he smiled as he threw that touchdown pass. Yep, he sure that did. is so freaking exciting that he has that ability to read the um, the secondary and how they shifted into a, a, a two uh, – I think it was a, a one high to a two high, and then they went back to a one high, and then Jesse James was just wide open on the in the in the end zone. That was just really, really, I guess, five yards away from the end zone. That was just really exciting. One play I do want to bring up because a lot of people have been talking about, oh, you know, what's the best play Justin Fields make? Was it that run for the touchdown? That was great. Was it, you know, the wide open pass? That was great. A couple people were like the shot that he kind of threw that the wide receiver was like a corner route and he overthrew the wide receiver a little bit. Honestly, I don't even think that was the best play. I think that was really great. Um, I think that was really, really great coverage by the corner. And I honestly don't even think, you know, the top level quarterbacks in the NFL could have made that throw. Uh, but the play that I loved the most was this, and then we'll go on into the rest of the offense. When he, when it was third and six, which has been our Achilles heel on offense. Yes. Scrambled out to the right side. He started running full speed to pull the corner or the outside linebacker, whoever it was in the Dolphins defense up to him, leaving the tight end wide open. And instead of panicking and sliding or trying to make a move and get injured and a lot of things, a lot of rookie quarterbacks do. He saw that guy come at him. He stopped before the line of scrimmage threw a little dump pass and got the first down. That to me was just the epitome of exactly what an absolute dominant quarterback in the NFL who can run should do. That's what Russell Wilson does. He, yeah. he uses his legs as secondary. And that's exactly what Justin Fields did on that play. And plus he made a play on third and six, which has been our Achilles heel. I, I freaked out. I lost it. I lost it. It wasn't it a was, draw play. It wasn't yeah. a draw. It wasn't, it wasn't a draw play. Draw. I lost it. So that play, Chicago Bears fans, if you haven't watched it, go watch that play. It was, that was so mature and so amazing on so many levels of football. You honestly have no idea because he pulled that guy off of him, had a wide open guy for the first down, moved the chains, and we went down and scored later. Oh, 
it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Yeah. So. I think that Justin Fields definitely, and Justin Fields also is improving everyone around him. Let's yes. say, you know, Jesse James has definitely become a better tight end. He's a veteran tight end. What a pickup by Ryan Pace, by the way, shout out to him. Uh, you know, Jesse James definitely, I think is going to be the third string uh, tight end on this roster, but we'll get a lot of playing time. Uh, mm-hmm. One thing I do want to say in regard, and I know we didn't have this written down, but I, I do want to hit on this is Matt Nagy is really doing something. He has yeah. really improved as a head coach this past off season. I think he learned a lot from his mistakes last year in regards to, you know, power in regards to, you know, play calling decision-making. He is letting his staff do things. He is letting his player do things. Yeah. He is letting people come to him. He's absorbing it like a sponge and he is a better head coach as of right now. I know I have ripped on Matt Nagy a lot. I know that 90% of bears nation has ripped on Matt Nagy a lot. Always love Matt Nagy. You just want to lay that out there. I know London, London was <laughs> the rare 10%. That's why I had to say 90% because London is like the leader of the 10%, but Matt yeah. Nagy is starting to win me over a little bit. I think that the way he did thing is handled things as off season is really something. And I'm telling you, I have that excitement and that blood boil and that adrenaline from 2018 again. I don't know why. I don't. It's not just because of Justin Fields. It's because of the entire team. I, there's something about this season that I think is going to be really special. And I hope we come back to this video and I hope we come back to this clip on August 16, 2021 and be like, holy cow. Like, you know, you do have that subconscious that knows the future. So yeah. very excited about that. Really wanted to hit on that. And everyone's living front free in Mitch Trubisky's head right now because of how much the Bears have improved with a little bit, with just getting rid of him out the of the moment room. next week when we pick him off, I'm going to lose it. Just Tony, because, like, I, I understand the, te- I understand, like, what he said in that interview was taken out of context and Twitter blew it up the wrong sure. way. And I, of course. And I, I know he's a real stand up guy, but at the same time, like, it's just kind of like hovering over Chicago still. And I'm just over it. I'm over it. I, I hate that we're even giving him the acknowledgement, but whatever. I, you know, Mitch was a great community guy, he was a great guy. There's no doubt about it, but in regards to football, he was not the answer for the Chicago Bears, especially with the talent that this team carries. Mm-hmm. So let's go more into it. Let's go into more of the offense. That's enough on Justin, not enough on Justin Fields today. Like we could talk about him all day, but we do want to hit on the rest of the team because this was a team effort. The offensive line did not give up one sack. We said it earlier. How impressive is that? Very surprising to Bears fans that they were able to hold their own. And that's something that is very, very big sigh of relief for Bears fans because that shows we have depth at the offensive line position even with all these injuries and it's rumored this week, James Daniels and Jermaine and will be back in pads, limited reps may not play in the preseason game still, but they are making progression to come back this season. Very exciting news to hear. Stay tuned for that. David Montgomery had limited reps today at practice uh, on August 16th, Monday, August 16th, 2021. That is because he had a slight tweak on a hit early in the game. Uh, I think, I believe it was the second offensive possession for the Chicago bears He did come off limping a little bit, but it has been confirmed. It is just a soreness injury. He is fine. He's icing. He will be better. He will be good to go next week, uh, according to reports, or this upcoming Saturday, according to reports. Damian Williams, though, this is another big thing. Depth. That's something that London and I stressed literally two weeks ago that we weren't sure about the depth of this team. Damian Williams looked absolutely fantastic. What a steal by Ryan Pace for a cheap one-year contract. We like this move. London and I can agree to it. I am very mind blown. I know the defense had more depth than the offense, and that was not saying much. And we're going to get to that in a second about the defense. But man, the offense looks like they have a lot of depth right now. London, Damian Williams as a player, but also the depth of this offense is really starting to you know turn eyes for you and I. I know you're feeling better about it. So kind of go more into what you're thinking. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think you hit on it pretty well there. Uh, it, just the depth at running back. I thought Herbert had a pretty good game. I thought when he came in yes. with the third team, he had a pretty good game. Um, Damian Williams stepped up when David Montgomery um, just, you know, tweaked his ankle a little bit. Not a huge deal. I think he just kind of fell on it wrong. Um, he came in and he has 4-4 speed and he's played on really good teams and he definitely showed that. Um, it was really weird seeing number eight running at running back. That kind of, <laughs> yeah. it's still, I'm still not used to it defensively and offensively, but it, it's very cool. So that was really awesome to see. And like I said, Cohen is still out. Okay. He is other than David Montgomery, you know, that kind of dynamic offensive player that we're still missing Damian Williams. Great pickup. Um, and I agree. I think the biggest depth that was shown was on the offensive line, giving up yeah. zero sacks the entire game. I think we stressed a lot about you need depth to be a playoff team. You need depth to be a Super Bowl team. I mean, look at the Buccaneers. They were the first Super Bowl team in modern era that has every single player returning. 
because they want to win again. They had great depth and they were able to just absolutely dominate the Chiefs because of it. And I, I, I agree. I think our depth is still a little shaky on the offensive side. I'm very good on the defensive side now, uh, but I really love what the offensive line and the running back group, who I was a little nervous about, were able to do uh, in regards to just depth, in regards to just playing really well. Uh, it was it was exciting. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. I, I feel, I think I kind of uh, spoke to it and I know you just hit on it more, but the off the defensive side, we don't feel that stress of depth anymore. The offensive side, definitely there's a side of relief, but yes. there's still as much improvement, which Ryan Pace went out and did immediately after the game. We're yes. going to get into that in a little bit. Uh, before we get into the defense really facts, just a quick announcement. Tony and I, unfortunately London can't make it, but Tony and I will be at the bears game this upcoming Saturday against the bills, Trubisky fields, and if we follow us on Instagram, our Instagram handle is right below and look out for clues of where Tony and I are. If you guys find us, Tony and I will buy the first two people that find us. Whoever finds Tony first, whoever finds me first, a beer, and you'll be featured on our Instagram. So stay tuned for that. Very excited for it. We're, let's chug some beers, folks. I mean, like Bears football is back. London's going to FaceTime us and chug a beer too. So that's so just to make sure that he's involved. But the defense, that's something that I really want to hit on quickly before we get into other news because other news is very exciting. Alec Ogletree deserves to be on this roster. There is no doubt about it that he is looking like potentially the steal of free agency this year for any team. Uh, the man was all over the field while playing for the injured Roquan Smith. Roquan Smith has a groin injury. He could have played, he said, but they wanted to take it easy with him. Uh, Alec Ogletree had four, uh, Ogletree, sorry. Alec Ogletree had four tackles, one being solo, and was just a tackle for loss. And what a steal for this guy. I mean, he was all over the field. He was guiding guys. He's working with the younger team. He's getting them more familiar. I got Charles Snowden. You can see him talking to Ogletree a lot, which we're going to get into uh, Snowden in a minute. But wow, what a game by Ogletree. If he doesn't make this roster, I'd be very shocked. But it's a very encouraging sign that they had him filling in for Roquan Smith instead of Christian Jones out of the gate. Christian Jones also deserves to be on this roster due to his knowledge of the defense and familiarity with the team. So, and he's play, he played, he had a very good game as well. Tanga. Tonga was all over the place. Tonga, I baby. He, I mean, he literally was an absolute animal on the field this week. He was blowing up the line. He was hitting people left and right. Quarterback pressure. He is looking like a better and better late round seal every single game. I know, London, you're very excited about him. Uh, but overall, Tonga, watch out for Tonga this upcoming week against the Bills. I think that he is also going to do the same exact thing. Now, London, this is going to be your department because I know – you have spoke very highly of the secondary, and this is an area of depth that we didn't know we had until the last week. It's not even just the game, and I'm hoping to see it against the Bills as well. But the secondary looks very strong, even without Kyle Fuller. And it's going to be interesting to see who does it and does, does make the roster and who's going to be that second cornerback starter. So Miami, an up-and-coming offense, young quarterback, was tested and did not find much success against this Bears secondary. So London... Quickly, just from a secondary standpoint, how are you feeling about the depth and who do you think has a legitimate shot in making this roster and who do you think is in deep trouble on not making this roster? Yeah, I, Nick, I think on the secondary wise, I just want to say this really, really quick here, just to, as a disclaimer, the amount of pressure that we apply for our defensive line and our linebackers is heaven for our secondary. And I think that's why like players like Vildor and stuff will get an opportunity to play a lot because when, you know, we're getting to the quarterback in under, you know, two seconds, they have to make reads faster. They're going to make mistakes and things happen. The guys that I just want to highlight that I think had really good games and do deserve to be on the roster, which again, I was a little out on this guy, but I'm very excited. If you go back to our, our secondary video pre training camp, Houston Carson, he played a really good game. He felt like he was all over the field. He had an interception. Um, I felt like he was covering the correct players and kind of in his spot. And honestly, I mean, there's got to be somebody, you know, Gibson's a little older. Eddie, of course, is, you know, the premier safety. But when it comes to depth, there has to be somebody that stepped up. I thought that was going to be Dion Bush. Ended up not really being Dion Bush, at least this game. It ended up being Houston Carson. Really, really great to see that guy. And he actually might get playing time outside of just being a special teams guy. Kudos to him. Uh, you know, in regards to, you know, Jalen Johnson, you know, Vildor, all those kind of guys, they played extremely well. I didn't see any, you know, 
I didn't see any guys like getting behind, um, you know, extremely deep passes, all that kind of stuff that has been kind of Achilles a heel for us in the past, especially speedsters. I was expecting Jalen Waddle to, you know, cook us a little bit and he had a pretty good punt return, but on the offensive side, didn't really do much, um, which is something that we should be extremely excited about because Miami has a lot of speed at wide receiver. And that's something that a lot of NFL teams do. And we held it very, very well. The one guy that I'm going to say that I think his stock is continuing to drop is Desmond Trufant. Yeah. Um, I really didn't see much out of him. I honestly didn't see his leadership out on the field. Um, you know, I saw players like Vildor and, you know, Eddie and just those kind of guys, you know, chirping, talking to the secondary, you know, passing messages around. I really didn't see it from Desmond Trufant. I don't know if his head's not there. I don't know if he's just really not there. I don't know if he kind of expects that he's going to get cut um, here, you know, when cuts start happening. I don't really know what's going on with Desmond Trufant. Um, and I, I watched him pretty closely and was kind of, and it's, again, disappointed. Uh, and I expect he, more out of him. He is out today of practice due to our personal reasons. So he might be taking that mental day to kind of get his mind back yeah. on track because he knows yeah. he's under a lot of pressure right now. He was the starting corner before the season began, and now he's barely looking like he's going to make this roster. So yeah. best of luck to him. Uh, we never want to see a player get cut, but – you know, it is the NFL. The NFL is a business at the end of the day. Uh, two more things on the defense really fast before we get into final quick news. Charles Snowden, undrafted rookie free agent. A lot of people have been commenting on him, asking why we haven't hit on him because there hasn't been much set at camp. But this guy ripped it up on Saturday. I think he has a legitimate shot at making the roster now. He had two quarterback hits, one sack, and one tackle for loss. And he's, he was an absolute gem steal, an undrafted free agency. So loved his injury energy, not injury, energy, and we're hoping that he makes the roster. One guy that struggled, though, uh, not much to say, so keeping a close eye on him in regards to roster cuts is Travis Gibson. We talked very highly of him last week, putting on muscle, looking great in camp. It was hard to watch this week, this weekend against the Miami Dolphins. He got burned a few times. He missed clean open field tackles and again we don't play in the nfl he is definitely a much more talented person than us and you know it's easier said than done from a fan's perspective but man keep a close eye on him because he needs to show that he's a player that needs to make this roster in regards to his energy his size and his ability so stay tuned for that and finally in other news london just hitting on this super fast bears signed nine-time pro bowler jason peters to a one-year contract a lot of people are like why would we sign an old guy why like obviously the Eagles got rid of him for a reason yeah he is an old guy and sure it could turn out like Orlando Pace when we took him from the Rams years ago but guess what this team needs depth right now there is no for sure if if Infetti and Daniels are going to be back you know they need to figure out that I mean it could just be a depth signing folks you know he's a great mentor to a young offensive line you have to remember that he is a Super Bowl champion he is known as the bodyguard I think that like that's that's very good one of the best left tackles in the NFL for a well, lot of years. For a lot of years. So this was a great sign in. We got him for a veteran's minimum, according to reports. Um, and it's a one year contract. It's not like we're locked into him for a while. There's no commitment of him being a starter either. Look out for him to, to be practicing by the end of this week, they're saying. Uh, he has to uh, for sure pass his physical and everything else. So just to confirm that. But look, he may play against the Bills. I highly doubt it, but we'll see. Maybe in the fourth quarter or something like that. So very exciting. I know that that was a lot of information for the first day back. Uh, very exciting news. It's good to see the Bears start the preseason 1-0. and Yes, it doesn't count, but this counts for the future of the franchise, and we are very excited for that. So with that, stay tuned for our next episode of Just Another Year Chicago in regards to the Chicago Bears. But, my, but we, are, we, we can't even express our excitement. So again, stay tuned for us. Look for, out for us on social for more updates to come. But thank you again for joining us for this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Brody. I am joined alongside London Beth, and we will see you guys next time.